absolutely it is love gorgeous it. out there. Uh, very good Monday to you. A victory Monday yes. to you. Uh, Betsy Kling is off. She works so hard. We have to give her a vacation now and again. <laughs> Lena Lai is in her place. I'm Jay Crawford. A very good victory Monday to you, Lena. Love it. Doesn't and, it feel great? And, and, and by the way, yeah. the beard is, is coming along nicely. We said, guess I'm, which me team member is taking part? Well, ta-da. Yeah, here you go. I'm one of, it's a good cause. Yes. It's a great cause. And when I'm asked to help a great cause, I'll do it. Even if it means throwing away my razor and it even means if I look like Santa Claus for about a month, <laughs> we're here to help. Um, great to have you in. First at five, just one week after 3 News did a story about what's being done to address bullying and suicide risk at Mentor Schools, more than 200 students walked out in protest today saying the administration is not doing enough. Monica Robbins reports on some of the troubling allegations. The silence shattered Monday morning. Racism should not be normal in Mentor High School. Hundreds of Mentor High School students fed up with issues of racism, bullying, even allegations of sexual assault, used a megaphone to speak their truth. Not more bullying assemblies to teach us about bullying. Not showing us how to make friends during advisory. A very real change in our school. Last week, 3 News profiled programs available in Mentor Schools to address some of these issues, especially after a string of suicides in recent years. But these students say it's not enough. I have been called a tranny, a f a loser, and have even been told several times to kill myself over something as simple as changing my name. Because I'm a victim of sexual assault, I was repeatedly assaulted at Memorial Middle School in eighth grade. The school and school district, from what I know, have more than 10 record, recorded suicide deaths. This is sickening and needs to change. I've been constantly called the N-word, and the school refuses to do anything about it. There needs to be a shift, but it doesn't start with me or you. It starts at the core of the administration. Toward the end of the protest, school principal Jason Crow stepped into the crowd and told the students they were heard. And today is not the end of this conversation, but a start of it. We are going to follow up on each and everything that happened today. But this time, students expecting action, not words. If anyone feels that they have made a report, it's gone, it's gone nowhere. My door is always open. Wow. wow. There, you know, and has the school district said anything? You know, they sent a letter out to parents and guardians uh, from Superintendent Bill Porter and Principal Jason Crow, and it said in part, the high school administrative team will follow up with students to address the serious concerns they shared with us today. We understand our students' right to protest peacefully, but we do not support the idea of students walking out of school to do so. We would like to continue this conversation with our students in a productive manner. And they find us, uh, also said, we do take all reports of bullying, assault, harassment, and racism extremely seriously, and all reports are thoroughly investigated by our team. And it's interesting because just last week we were reporting how they've gotten mental health uh, experts into the schools to help the students, but according to these kids, it's just not enough, and they want to see more done. Wow. Mm. Certainly, this is not isolated at Mentor High School. We hear about bullying all the time. What's different about this story is the students now have taken things into their own hands and have taken action. Yeah, and we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to follow up and see what happens with the school district as well. All right, interesting story. Monica, thanks. Sure. Now on your feet at five, some Northeast Ohio schools are now dropping their mask requirements just as the COVID-19 vaccine is now available for five to 11 year olds. But experts believe it may be happening too soon. Brandon Simmons joins us live from Parma and explains why some schools are making the switch now. Hi, Brandon. Yeah, hi, Lena. Yeah, uh, we all were told early on in the pandemic how important masks were in preventing the spread of COVID-19, and many health experts say it may be second only to the vaccine itself. So it may be surprising for many people to hear that some school districts are already moving away from masks, considering many students in that 5 to 11-year-old range haven't yet had an opportunity to get the vaccine, let alone give it time to work. But some schools are changing the rules about the controversial mask mandates because Ohio's guidance to schools has changed. It now allows students to stay in school even if they're exposed to COVID. They would just have to wear a mask for two weeks following an exposure. Now, before, students had to stay out of school for 10 days if they were exposed while not wearing a mask. But at least one health commissioner in Summit County is urging school districts right now to keep their mask rules in place. Masks are always good unpopular but good we do not have the power to mandate it so 
we have um, respectfully asked that they do um, consider all of the safety features. And some have agreed to keep it on at least through Thanksgiving, the holidays, trying to get through Christmas. And keeping those mask mandates in place through the holidays also allows for more students to get fully vaccinated, which of course doesn't happen until 14 days after they receive the second shot. But masks have been one of the most controversial uh, things in schools since school started this year. So it's not surprising why a lot of administrators want to make the change. Of course, they've done so right here in Parma. They've done so in Avon Lake and Lorain County, also to, to the south. Coventry schools and Nordonia Hills also dropped their mask mandates as well, Lena. So we'll, we may see this happening all over Northeast Ohio very soon. Controversial for sure. I know you've been in those school board meetings just like I have. Sometimes it's the parents who are more riled up over this than the kids. Yes, yeah, definitely the parents a lot of the times. And uh, actually, one of the school administrators told me this has been a more heated topic than when they decided to close schools and go virtual last year. So that's wow. really surprising. All right. Thanks so much, Brandon. Appreciate it. Lena, today, Governor Mike DeWine and Lieutenant Governor John Husted were in Cleveland to talk up a unique partnership between three hospitals and two universities that usually do not work together. State incentives have helped to create the Cleveland Innovation District. The goal here is to create 20,000 new jobs in healthcare and technology, and they want to do that over the next 10 years. And hopefully, they plan to find a cure for COVID and other diseases by sharing research and work on infectious diseases. We talk a lot about jobs and it's about jobs, but it's also about quality of life. Uh, it is making Ohio uh, the place to come for research. And the reality is that when you gather smart people together, more smart people want to come. Because those who collaborate best win. If we want to be world class, we have to be world class collaborators. The state is funding similar partnerships in Columbus and Cincinnati, but Lena, the Cleveland Innovation District is the largest one statewide and state officials estimate that the ripple effect of their investment in this deal and those made by the hospitals and the universities will be in the three billion dollar wow. neighborhood. This is really forward thinking, I think, because obviously with healthcare being privatized and it's, it's, it's all for profit, mm -hmm. they want to keep that research to themselves because obviously they can stand to benefit from it. But one mind is great, two minds are, are better, yeah. three minds and so on. And, and, and this I think is, this is a brilliant idea. Absolutely, this is the future of Cleveland. You know, we've for right. long been in the Rust Belt, Steel, Steel City, but yeah. but yeah, healthcare and biotechnology, that's the way to go. Yeah, and certainly they are forging forward mm -hmm. with this idea. Really cool. Back of the pocket, throws, right sideline, it's picked off. They got it down the sideline. It's Denzel Ward, he's to the 35, 40, he's to the 50, he's to the 40, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, a pick six, Denzel Ward is back. Play action, fake to jump, in the pocket, loads up, going long, Peoples Jones is out there, he's got it, 10, 5, touchdown. Turns, gives, Chubb runs, 30, 35, there he goes, 40, 45, 50, there he goes, 40, he's running to the river, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Nick Chubb. Is he in the river yet? He's in the river. <laughs> <laughs> if only they could all be that easy. I just told Jimmy, I was standing in, the, in an airport in Florida, literally jumping up and down, listening to your voice on that Denzel Ward pick six. It was a thing of beauty. No stress, no drama, really just a resounding and complete victory over our in-state rivals down in Cincinnati. Add it all up, 41-16, the Browns win. Yeah. As I said, if they could all be that easy. And now they're above 500 again, Jimmy, at five and four. And as they say, it's on in New England. Yeah. It is. It's on to New England, and I have to tell you, the, the tricky part of this whole situation was, how were they going to play? Yeah. You really didn't have a feel of how they were going to play after the week they went through last week. And, you know, sometimes when you go on a trip with them, you can get a vibe of how they're going to be when you're getting on the plane, but it's only a 40-minute flight to, to Cincinnati, <laughs> so you really couldn't get a feel. You're up and you're down, 
and you just wondered where they going to be together and and how they were together and I'll tell you what the defense really came to play but they really came to play and the Browns went out and took the game and they took it right away Denzel Ward came up with that interception it's the biggest play of the game and it was so early because Cincinnati was ready to go ahead seven nothing but he went off on his way and came up with that pick and took it 99 yards and the Browns defense which has been shy on getting turnovers all of a sudden the faucet got turned on yesterday and the turnovers poured out three turnovers they got they get five sacks in the game three from their defensive back Troy Hill and then the offense took over with explosive plays all together it was just a complete team victory the one we've been waiting for all season long I feel like the, the, this entire season our backs are going to be against the wall uh, that, that's that's nothing new um, that's where the, where we are in the AFC it's a great division it's a great conference uh, so I feel that way every week Okay, so here we go, and now we go back to the Odell Beckham Jr. situation. He's a footnote right now, but he's going to be a big note for somebody. He's on waivers right now. He should clear waivers, they feel, and he hopes, tomorrow afternoon at about 4 o'clock. And if that happens, then at that point in time, he's a free agent, and he can make a deal with any team in the NFL. There are a lot of teams right now during this waiver period time that are saying we don't have the money to take them off waivers because it's going to cost them so much money. And so the Browns have made it comfortable for them and kind of an easy applicable move for him that if he's a free agent, then they can get the deal done and he can sign somewhere else. Seattle seems to be the place that he seems to want to play right now. That's interesting. Yeah. Russell Wilson is coming back. Yeah. Um, it is on to New England coming up this week. But I'll tell you what. Uh, they're playing well, are, too. Yeah, they yeah, are. Rising. They are right back in the playoff. Uh, yeah. They're 5-4, and four too, mm -hmm. playing with a rookie quarterback. Those are the Browns yesterday that we loved last year. Mm -hmm. Those are the Browns that we loved yeah. last year. I mean, I love the way they played last year. They were so much fun to watch. Yeah. They have not been fun to watch this year. I mean, they've been <laughs> carrying a load, you know, on their shoulder, and they kind of unloaded that load, I think, during the middle of the week last week. Do you get a sense that there's some relief that this OBJ yes. stuff is gone and out of the way now? Yeah, I really do. And a lot of people have wondered, what about Jarvis Landry? They're right. best friends. And they'll always be best friends. Yeah. Okay. They, I mean, their friendship is true blue, uh, true purple and gold. Maybe yes, got it LSU. Right, go all right, all right. Excuse me. I should have played <laughs> that right away. But I really do believe it was burdensome. Yeah. for Landry to have Beckham on the team because he really had to take care of him all the time. It wasn't just the football part. It was everything. And I think Landry just wants to be his own player and his own man. So they'll always be friends. There's yeah. no doubt about that. But I think it has lightened the load. And, it's, and it's been great to see Baker pass, uh, spread out his passes. You yeah. know, I, I saw what, eight different players. None of right. them caught more than three. Right. Yeah. Um, their offense, I think, like I said, it's like the offense last year. There was flow to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't – this year at times they've said, okay, we're going to run the ball. And if they have trouble running the ball, they keep running the ball. Or, hey, we're going to try and throw the ball a little bit more. We're going to go to the tight ends. But when it's really working, it's everything yeah. thrown into the salad. You know, it's Chubb and then to the tight ends and then to the wide receivers. And I want to tell you, the guy that looked most comfortable of all yesterday was Mayfield. Yeah, there I was so not too. a whisper about yeah. that shoulder yesterday. No, right? funny. not one word right. about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 21 throws a game, I think, is a really good number. Well, remember early in the year last year, Jay, that's what he was throwing. Yeah, the ball, and that, I think that's, that's a good number. If you're over that by too much, yeah. you're probably digging out of a hole. Now, my final point is I have not shaved in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Baby face. But it's the boyish good looks, I yes. think. Yeah, send me a right. good self image. <laughs> no <laughs> shave no right right October and November for Jim Donovan. <laughs> no shave November. No end in sight. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, with a face that pretty, don't cover it all up. All right, don't okay. Don't cover it you're up. Well, all right. Man. Whatever society calls for. I will do. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Still ahead on what's new, a trending TikTok hand gesture helps save a teen's life. This is an incredible story. The signal being seen around the world on how you could possibly help someone in the future. This is a story you need to pay attention to. And then Astro World Festival gets out of control. The latest on what went wrong that killed several people. Matt, not a bad start to the week at all. Well done. Yeah, you could say that. It doesn't get much better than this this time of year. And we're going to hang on to that tonight. The next two days aren't too bad either. The big weather changes arrive later this week. But for your fall sports forecast, we're in the 60s now, falling back into the 50s. Light breeze will have mainly clear skies. And then things change. We do have some snowfall in the forecast. Yep, it's November. It's okay to say that. We'll guide you through it coming up.
Welcome back to What's New. We now have a fascinating story of how TikTok actually saved a kidnapping victim. This man you see here, James Brick, was caught in Kentucky. He's accused of kidnapping a 16-year-old girl. So she disappeared from North Carolina two days before that, and she used a hand signal gaining popularity on TikTok. There you see it to alert other drivers that she was in danger. What uh, the TikTok hand gesture is, is you tuck your thumb in and you wrap your forefingers around it and you release, tuck your thumb in, wrap your fingers around it and release back and forth. Wow. The other driver called police, gave the dispatcher mile marker updates, which gave police time to set up the roadblock. The signal was created by the Canadian Women's wow. Foundation in response to a surge in domestic violence during the pandemic. And the, the U.S. Uh, parent organization, Women's Funding Network in the U.S., mm -hmm. they made the TikTok video that went viral. Wow. And my gosh. So many times on this show, we talk about TikTok and some of the bad things that happen. Sure. These viral things where kids are tearing up bathrooms and just being destructive. But when you hear a story like this, you realize how powerful these social media platforms can be. It's very simple. Yeah. I had never heard this before. I had and, never and heard it before. And it's good for all of us to know what that signal is. Now, right? now we do. You see it. Now we do. Be on the lookout for it. Mm -hmm. You never know. Right. Incredible story. Absolutely. All right, and with that, we turn to Matt and weather. And so your weather word today, Matt, is um, let's go with community. Because I think together, the community came together and, and saved this, potentially saved this young girl's yeah. life. Yeah, that's an incredible story, guys. It really is. Not to make light of it, but, you know, weathermen and women around here get different hand signals this time of year when we start to put <laughs> snow in the forecast. So <laughs> Not today, my not friend. Not today, I know. Don't not, demonstrate that, okay? Yeah, just a big thumbs up today. That's what I saw on the ride in. It's been great. You know, guys, we've got a very active weather week around here. Uh, it, you, you know something's amiss when you've got temperatures in the 60s. We were in the low 70s in spots today. Things have to change, right? Let's try to keep it as long as we can. It's beautiful outside. 60s across the board, lake water temperature, a degree cooler today, but you wouldn't even know it unless you're stepping in there. Nice southwest breeze blowing as well. We've had gusts to 20 at times. We're on the good side of a high pressure. This high pressure is really firmly in control. Gave us the beautiful weekend. You can see that clockwise flow around it, bringing in the warmer conditions to northeast Ohio. There's a frontal boundary off towards the west, though. This will settle in here later tomorrow, so we'll see an increase of clouds, perhaps some showers. There's not a lot of moisture with it, but as that moves by, that will kind of tamper our temperatures next two days, but still two nice days out in front of us. But out towards the west, they're getting hit hard. All the communities up and down the western seaboard. I said communities. Is that okay? Judges? Okay. I, I, I see it down at the bottom. That's good. We got points today. But all those communities are getting hit pretty hard with some rain and snow once again. That system is going to head east. That will dislodge all the cold air out in Canada out towards the west and really start to stir things up later this week. National Design Mart, hour by hour forecast. We'll go near term. You notice the clouds increasing tonight. Just some high clouds. Should be a nice sunset here. I think it's already ongoing outside with the uh, earlier sunset. You can see those temperatures tonight. Not dropping too quickly. We won't be down into the 30s. I think low 40s ought to do it. Tomorrow, not a bad day. We will have more clouds around. I think we'll make it up into the 60s. If you're along the lakeshore, though, the difference tomorrow, we had the wind all the way up to the shoreline, bringing the warm conditions today. Tomorrow, the wind's going to be light. We'll likely have a lake breeze develop, so we'll be in the 50s as you get down towards downtown, out towards Ashtabula, uh, Geauga County, is, or not Geauga County, Geneva as well. And you can see tomorrow night, we do have a couple stray showers in there. Otherwise, that system will pass not much doing and then we're back to sunshine on Wednesday with cooler conditions. Ah, here are the changes though. Union Home Mortgage seven day forecast up to 67 on Thursday. That's when the front arrives on your Veterans Day. Late day rain and wind. We turn to rain and snow next weekend. We'll take a real good look at that in our next weather update. We'll be back.
You know that music. Time for Pop Break with Kira Cotton. Yeah, here at Music Festival, we even talk about Astro World got out of control mm. in Houston. Uh, but you've learned some new details. Yeah, we definitely ha still have a lot to learn. But mm. as we're ever seeing the return of live music around the country, what happened at Astro World this weekend was a true tragedy. The two-day festival, headlined by Grammy-nominated artist Travis Scott, killed eight people and injured hundreds of others in Houston Friday night. With approximately 50,000 people in attendance, according to reports, the deaths and injuries were the result of a crowd surging incident. The victims range in age from 14 to 27 years old. Scott took to social media after the news was released, saying that he was devastated by what happened and that he's working with officials to help his hometown community heal. But now more than a dozen lawsuits have been filed against Scott and Astro World organizers. Travis has agreed to refund all of the attendees at the concert and will cover the, co the funeral costs of all eight victims. Switching gears now, it's time to take a trip to the upside down. Over the weekend, Netflix dropped two trailers for the upcoming season of Stranger Things. Titled Welcome to California, the trailer takes viewers back to the glory days of the 80s with all the fun and mystery of the show's previous seasons. While it's been more than two years since the release of season three, the trailer showed the return of several main characters as they count down to the best spring break ever. Stranger Things season four is expected to be released in summer of 2022. And hip-hop artist Cardi B is slated to host the American Music Awards later th this month, but first she's got to get some celebrity star sightings out of the way. Over the weekend, the New York native met Twilight star Robert Pattinson and completely had a fangirl moment. The two <laughs> ran into each other at a British Vogue event in Beverly Hills on Thursday, and Cardi posted a video of the encounter to Twitter on Friday with the caption, Look who I met the other day. I felt like a teen. <laughs> now this is just a reminder that even celebrities get starstruck. So Jay and Lena, do either of you have a moment where you guys have fangirled out, well, fangirled out, Jay. <laughs> I fanboyed hard when I met uh, Bono from U2. Oh, yeah. I, I can I, see that. I, I had a chance to interview him, and I'm not kidding you, I couldn't think straight. Yeah. It was, I mean, it, it, it just, flew, the interview flew by. It was actually 20 minutes, and I was in heaven. It was just unbelievable. Well, last week we talked about, it. if I see Adam Driver, I'll be fangirling from, <laughs> and he's in town. Wait, So right Adam, now? <laughs> shooting a movie. Yes. Oh, wow, so, there hey, you go. So, hey, Adam, if you want to, you know, do By the way, interview, the I'd be happy uh, to do the one-on-one -on -one interview. Stranger Things season yeah. one was great, but this, I, and I know the COVID killed production sure. and everything, but summer of 2022? You got yeah. a little bit of time to wait. I don't remember anybody's name from that show. It's been that long. Okay. So good. I love that. Just show. saying. Okay, you may remember earlier in the pandemic, there was a candy challenge. I'm sure you remember this. Here's the way it worked. Parents would set up a hidden camera, then they'd put candy in front of their kids, and they'd say, now, I'm going to leave the room, and you can't eat this candy until we come back. And, of course, the videos were absolutely hilarious. Well, we recently found another one, and the kids' reactions, <laughs> Lena, just as good. you got to wait until we come back. I'm going to leave them right here. Don't touch them. Wait, okay? We're going to come back. Don't wait. eat them yet. Don't eat them. We'll be right back. We just gotta go get something. Just go. Just wait a second. Mm -hmm. They're Thank thinking you. about it. Mm -hmm. You first. <laughs> first. Who's gonna be the first one to do it? Look at them. Oh! <laughs> Look at I the little that. dance. The candy dance. <laughs> Oh my I gosh. We just had to look at each other. You first. No, you first. Yeah, I missed mm. that. I really did. I think that should be a thing on social media all the time because it never fails to That's make terrific. me laugh. Well, the coming up dance. next, frustration with skimpflation. What that means and what's to blame. We'll talk about this in Money Monday. Hmm. And letting it grow for those who can't. We're going to explain what's behind all the hair and no shave November talk that you're hearing about. We'll do that when What's New comes right back.
I'm here, I got you. And now, live from WKYC Studios, this is What's New. We welcome you back to What's New. We begin at 530 with three things you need to know. This morning, hundreds of students walked out of Menor High School. They're protesting a variety of issues, including bullying and racism. One of their main messages was that it's time for the school to not just listen to them, but to believe them. Principal Jason Crow stepped up to the megaphone and said he is sorry for the pain these students have felt and wants to better understand what they are going through. Rocky River police shot a woman they say lunged at them with a knife. This all happened just before two o'clock this morning. Police received a call that a woman at the Linden House Apartments had a knife and was threatening to hurt herself and others. According to police, they waited outside the apartment when she entered the hallway with a knife. She ignored their commands to drop it and charged at them. One officer used his taser, the other fired his gun. The woman is now in the hospital. Her condition is not known. And number three, today, Governor Mike DeWine signed a bill that will allow Ohioans to set off consumer grade fireworks during holidays and a few other select days. The new law finally removes the state's requirement that Ohioans who purchase fireworks must take them out of the state within 48 hours to set them off. Some of the holidays include New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Cinco de Mayo, Memorial Day weekend, July 3rd, 4th, and 5th, as well as the first Friday, Saturday, and Sunday before and after the 4th of July. Keep in mind, local municipalities will still have the right to restrict dates and times when fireworks can be set off. We have a full list of those dates and details on our website, WKYC.com. And with that, we welcome you back to What's New. I'm Jay Crawford, along with Lena Lai. Betsy is off this week, a much needed week of rest. As you can see, I am back from my week of rest looking about 25 years older. <laughs> That's because I am not shaving for a very You're good cause. The this, beard. Is, this is no shave November, and I'm as shocked as you are to realize that all of my facial hair now is completely white. The last you time I know. did this, no, because the last time I went, I don't like to go with any facial hair at all. I okay. shave every day. The last time I let it grow at all was about five years ago, and it was like speckled. It was okay. about half dark hair, half like light Kevin hair. Kevin Stefanski kind of. Yeah, exactly. So imagine my surprise after, uh, I guess, two or three days of not shaving. I looked in the mirror, and I, I didn't recognize who was standing <laughs> before me. So I may look 70 by the time no, November is come over. come on. They're and if products, it looks, Jay. They're and products. It, you know, if it grows enough. I may just go with it and play Santa Claus. How about oh, oh, that? Oh. Yeah, oh, oh. why not? Oh. <laughs> All right. We begin at 530 with our victorious Cleveland Browns. It's a victory yep. Monday. And boy. What a week it was leading up to this. OBJ drama was all over the place. That's finally culminated now in his release. Baker Mayfield and the Browns went down I-71 and made it look easy, dispatching uh, their state in-state rival, Cincinnati Bengals, 41-16. So now it's on to Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. But you know the drill here on What's New. We never officially turned the page on last week until Mike Polk gives us his very unique breakdown. Have you ever been at a house party that had a really awkward vibe because of the presence of one person that's making it uncomfortable for everyone? It might be someone's ex or an obnoxious guy from work, but regardless, there's a palpable tension in the air until the very moment that person leaves, at which point the mood changes entirely, everybody relaxes and starts having a good time. Well, Odell Beckham Jr. has now left the party and the atmosphere has improved considerably. It even livened up the dance floor. The Browns look completely rejuvenated in yesterday's Battle of Ohio, pummeling the North Kentucky Bengals 41 to 16. Was Odell's absence the primary reason for this impressive drubbing? Of course not, but it certainly didn't seem to hurt. I understand that there's still some raw feelings about the OBJ situation and how the Browns have handled it. Some of Odell's friends even wore free Odell shirts on Sunday, which I suppose is a nice gesture, but didn't really make much sense given that the Browns had already publicly announced they were waving him, so technically he was already free. I suggested on social media that perhaps they actually meant it 
a different way. Like when someone puts a sign in their driveway that says, free firewood, but like, free Odell. First come, first serve. Come and get it, Detroit Lions. Some consider that tacky, but like most Browns fans, I don't have anything against Odell, and I truly hope that wherever he lands next, he has great success, as long as it's exclusively in the NFC. Credit is due to Stefanski in the Browns front office. It's a tough call to part ways with a talent like OBJ while gaining nothing back in exchange other than a blessedly more boring locker room. But it clearly was the right call. For whatever reason, the Browns are simply a better team without Beckham on the field. As a broad overview, they were 9-4 in games when OBJ didn't play, but only 14-15 and when he was in the lineup. This is an example of an interesting phenomenon in which a team improves by removing one of their most talented components. It's known as addition by subtraction, and it is not exclusive to football. For example, what happens when you remove walnuts from chocolate chip cookies? Poof! They instantly become good cookies. Addition by subtraction. When Norman Fell left the hit show 3's company to helm his own spin-off, The Ropers, he was replaced by the incomparable Don Knotts as Mr. Furley, and the show reached new heights of hilarity. Addition by subtraction, you get it. The fact that the Browns responded to all of last week's drama with a huge win yesterday says a lot about Baker Mayfield and the vastly improved culture of this football team. That looked like the exciting, unified playoff team that we all remember from last season. And people could debate how much or little that might have to do with OBJ or the lack thereof, but no one can argue with the results. A crucial victory on the road against a divisional rival that caused their fans to become so sad that they looked like this. My favorite cutaway shot from yesterday's game. Who day that made that guy so sad? We did. Thank you, and you're welcome. So carry on, young warriors, and go Browns. <laughs> I've got to believe oh, mm -hmm. that that guy who I loved, who got all done up and looked real sad, and they hung on him for like 15 seconds. Yeah, they they did that for see, us. They the, were, yes, they, they did. That was for us. And the whole the therapy. Paint, I was watching it at a local tavern, and everyone was cheering at, when, at, this, at his sadness, <laughs> which is probably not very nice, but he did look like he was from Mike, me. it's okay because the whole world laughed at us for decades. Yes, so, so we, we deserve this. Deserve, this is therapy for and us. And that guy had it coming, too. I mean, really. And yeah. he did not go into work today. You know he didn't. Yeah, he, like, called, he called off. Yeah, he called off. I don't know why you called up, Don. I love the Three's Company reference. Yes. And I, I feel sad for those too young to understand it. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I, you were right on with that. And, and well, they need to learn. OBJ, Look it up. Yeah. Dan Campbell was asked. He's the head coach of the Detroit mm -hmm. Lions. The 0-8 Detroit Lions. Yes. Any interest in OBJ? It took him about two seconds to say no. No. They don't want to win. Of course they don't want to win. They want to be in the bottom. They want to be at the bottom. That, and I'm saying, what if he accidentally wins them a game? They want, they want to keep this going. Yeah, they need, a, they need a quarterback. So, yeah, that's why. And okay. I hope he does. I hope he has success somewhere. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's going to happen. Jim. Classy by Mayfield asked about it yesterday. Four words. I wish him well. Yeah. And so do we. Very cool. Yeah. Too. Actually, like a good burn in a way. It would have been right? worse. Yeah. So yeah. I was, it was smart. Anyways, it was good to see. Go Browns. Good that's that's the team I know from last year. Okay. Yeah, that's us. Thank, thank you very much. No problem. Addition by subtraction. <laughs> hey, it's Money Monday. We're talking about skimpflation. So skimpflation essentially means businesses are skimping on quality customer services. Examples include hotels, cutting back on daily housekeeping if you have a several day stay or at a restaurant that subs a QR code for a paper menu. And I bet you can guess what's to blame. What I hear from business leaders every day is they're all struggling with the competition for talent. They just can't find the people that they need. Research found that annual losses of $1.9 trillion driven by frustrated consumers who say they just won't come back. Yeah, I got to tell you, I've had an experience here in the last week mm -hmm. where I was on vacation. I was I was yeah. at a hotel and around the service industry a lot. And I was stunned at the difference because it's been so long since we've done any of this. Yeah. But I was just stunned at the difference. And I feel sorry for the businesses who are kind of stuck in the middle here. They don't have the people. They can't get right. the people to come in. And the, the quality of service was dramatically less yeah. than what I was used to. I mean, the housekeeping thing in hotels, you know, okay, do you request it every day then? If you, you know, we did speak to a housekeeper the last time my family went on vacation. Yeah. And, and the housekeeper's like, you know what? I need my job. So go ahead. Yeah. Request housekeeping. Sure. So, well, you know, you kind of. We requested it, but still didn't get it. Oh. Yeah, almost every night. Okay, that's bad. Of a week-long stay. Okay, that's bad. Yeah, and, I, you know, you can't really, you, you feel bad for the business. Yeah, Again, sure. they're kind of stuck in the middle here. Mm -hmm, for right. sure. All right, we'll still head. <clears throat> Happy Cleveland Pizza Week. We'll tell you some of the best deals you can get while supporting local businesses at the same time. I have a pen and paper ready for that part <laughs> of the show. 
Then, as you know, it's No Shave November. If you're just tuning in wondering who this is sitting on the What's New set. Uh, yeah, that's me. But uh, everybody's doing it from police officers to, yeah, some of us here at WKYC. So things are going to get a little hairy around town in the month of November. We're going to explain the good cause that will benefit from all of this. But first, Matt has got our weather in a jiffy. Hi, Matt. Yeah, hey, guys. So you talked about the skimflation, right? Yeah. Uh, I've decided our viewers, I know they've gone through it. I'm going to give them a 10-day forecast next. We're not even going to do seven anymore. So uh, <laughs> that's for you, everybody, for everything else that's getting shorted. This is how I feel about the weather forecast. Just keep this going, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. We'll take you through it. We'll take a, di a deep dive at that forecast, especially later this week. Coming up. Yes, I do. So as I'm trying out this No Shave November, I have beard envy for the first time in my life. Because of Matt? Because of Matt. Will you look at that, with all the black oh, hair yeah. in there. So they call me that patches, is... all right? There's all sorts of holes in no, there. No, you <laughs> shave completely on Halloween, and that's just that's yeah. what you've got in eight days. That's it. You know, that's I've had my impressive. beard. <laughs> not, not true at all. This is eight years worth. Uh, I have my beard since River was born. I went on that uh, paternity leave, so it's I remember three, that. three years old now. Yeah. I remember. Well, so it looks great. It will go away. It looks great. I hope so, because, man, I can't tell yeah. you. This is day eight, and I'm I, going crazy. I really like it. We're getting good viewer feedback on it, too. Okay. Uh, we're also getting good viewer feedback on the weather, because things have been just fantastic over the course of the weekend. You got the raking in, and the leaves came down from the tree again, so it doesn't look like you did anything. 72 degrees Cleveland today. Ashtabula, 68. Ditto that. Akron, Mansfield, New Philly. Average high this time of year, sitting around 54 degrees. So this is bonus territory. What could be better than today on November 8th? Last year, it was 77 degrees last year. We actually broke the record last year. If you remember that stretch, we had eight days in a row in the 70s. I remember broadcasting outside in the backyard, getting hit with acorns, and it was just glorious in November last year. And then the bottom fell out. And the bottom's not going to fall out 
anytime soon, at least over the next couple of days. We are going to get colder later this week, but nothing Arctic or anything like that. High pressure in charge right now. We've got that return flow around it, keeping the warm air coming in. There is a little cool down in the forecast. Weak cold front. This will slide by perhaps some showers later tomorrow. Temperatures tomorrow not quite as warm because we're not going to have the sun filled skies. We're going to have more clouds around, but nothing real cold, at least in the near term off towards the west. This is where all the action is out towards the west coast. Much needed rain and mountain snow coming in there again. Cold air has been locked up in northwest Canada. That system will dislodge this cold air and send it south later this week. That's going to be a pattern changing front. So let's take a good look at this. With your national Zymart big picture look here, you can see here comes the front on Thursday. This is going to be our game changer. We'll likely have a line of showers, even some rumbles of thunder. As we go throughout the day Thursday, that wind is going to pick up. It's going to be gusty by evening as this thing gets going. Rain will move in late in the day Thursday as that pulls on out. We'll have slightly cooler air coming in Friday, but I think we squeak a nice day in here. This is called the dry slot of the system. That moves by, and here's your weekend forecast. Big low wrapping up over us. We'll have rain and snow. Won't be a washout, won't be all day precip, but we're likely going to kick off the lakes as well. And then the models kind of diverge. That's why you're seeing two different forecasts Sunday and Monday. Another system expected to come in that will have more of a northwesterly fetch. I think we've got a pretty good shot at some lake effect snow Tuesday next week as it looks right now before things bounce back. Rainfall, yep, we're going to get it. Where's the snow going to fall over the next seven days? Well, you can see it starts to get painted on northeast Ohio again. This will change. But still, we are in the running for it starting this weekend. Union Home Mortgage seven day forecast. You know what? There you go. There's your 10 day. We're down into the 40s this weekend. Rain, snow chances. Again, I think the best chance at any accumulating snow would hold off till Monday, Tuesday. We'll keep our eye on that, but we bounce right back. Lena. All right. Thanks, Matt. Well, time now to see what's cooking in Cleveland for that. Let's bring in our digital anchor, Stephanie Haney. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Lena. You know, I think this might be one of my favorite weeks of the year because Cleveland Pizza Week is back. Now, we have always been big pizza people in the Haney household, so if that sounds like you, the deals this week are too good to pass up. 38 restaurants are participating and offering $8 pizzas all over the city of Cleveland, from Bar Cento in Ohio City to Zeppi's Pizzeria on the east side. If you get your pizza passport stamped four times, you can enter to win a $250 gift certificate. Happy slicing, Cleveland. And speaking of planning your meals for the week, this is need to know information for last minute Thanksgiving shoppers because lots of major name stores are opting to stay closed on Thanksgiving like they did last year when they had to stay closed. Places like Target, Trader Joe's, Walmart, Aldi's, Sam's Club, and Costco will not be open for last minute turkeys. But Whole Foods and Kroger and CVS will have limited hours. You can see the full list of which places are open and when on WKYC.com. And thankfully, today is a victory Monday and Browns fans are celebrating by throwing shade at soon-to-be former Cleveland Brown Odell Beckham Jr. Yesterday, Odell who was trending on Twitter after the decisive win over the Bengals. Here's one where Baker is saying, uh, sorry, OBJ doesn't work here anymore. <laughs> These two memes here make jokes about how much better off Baker is without OBJ on the field. And people had a lot of fun comparing Baker's relationship with OBJ to his chemistry with DPJ, Donovan People Jones. Can't argue about how fun those two were to watch. No. <laughs> Lena J, here's the thing. Browns fans have no chill. And I am here for it because, yeah. Jay, I told you this last season, I am here for the petty. We don't get to be petty, man. I'm 100% with We're you. Okay. When you said that last year, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to apologize for mm -hmm. it. And I feel the same way now. And I am a Baker Mayfield fan through and through. I think this guy's getting incredible heat for what yeah. he's done. It's like people have forgotten mm -hmm. how bad we were and that he took yeah. us to the playoffs last year. I will support him throughout all of this. So even in this drama, I'm like, yeah, good for you. Good for you, Baker. I can't explain it. Mike tried. It's addition by subtraction. Mm -hmm. We're just better without them, and I don't know how, but we are. Embrace the petty. More embrace petty. it. I'm, yeah, More embrace petty. the petty, baby. I'm with you, girl. <laughs> I love it. By the way, those are close to Bengals colors. I, I love know. the orange, but the orange and black together. I know. I need a brown undershirt. I'm going to get one. That's I'm exactly sorry. right, but it's a wonderful look. Thank it's you. a wonderful look. Okay, as you've noticed, it is No Shave November, and this year, some of us here at 3 News are putting away our razors. In fact, one of us <clears throat> might be sitting at the West News set right now. We're going to explain why so many are going shaveless in the month of November. It's all for a good cause. Then, what did this pup do that required firefighters to use the jaws of life? We'll show you ahead and show us something good.
Well, you may see some more hairy faces around this month as thousands take part in the annual No Shave November campaign. Yeah, it's the first time I'm participating, and I'm honored to do it because it's a great cause. Many do it for fun, but there is a good cause behind putting away the razors and the scissors this month. The point of No Shave November is to grow awareness for people battling cancer. That's why I'm involved, since many lose their hair during chemotherapy treatments. And although this is a worldwide effort here in Northeast Ohio, we're proud to tell you that 15 local police departments are putting grooming to the side for the entire month and raising money for a Special Wish Cleveland, a chapter helping grant wishes for kids with life-threatening illnesses and diseases. We each donate our own amount of money, which uh, is $60. And that uh, gives us the right to grow a, a beard or a mustache or neatly trimmed whatever. And I don't think anybody's going to end up looking like ZZ Top by the end of the month. And what better group than Special Wish? I mean, it's a Cleveland chapter. That's, it's, it hits us all more personally because it's localized. And we get to have fun with it. I mean, we get to grow beards and then we get to watch what our money does for somebody. And who doesn't like to see money well spent. We challenge other departments to see who could raise more money for this cause. All right, so there you go. Police departments around Cleveland, you have been officially challenged. 100% of all the funds raised, as you heard there, will grant a wish for a child from a Special Wish Foundation Cleveland chapter. So if you want to donate to one or more of the 15 local police departments participating in the No Shave, No Trim Wish Vember, we have all the details <laughs> on how to do that at WKYC.com. <clears throat> okay, you're participating I too, am. alongside yeah. Dave Chodowski. Yes, I was <laughs> thrilled to hear that Dave is also throwing away the razor. 3 News is also going to be making a donation. There you go. There's the... Um, there's Here's the look. Now, here's the deal. Wait, I can't so, even see it. Well, so here's the thing. Dave um, is going to start today. Okay. I, as a little uh, communication snafu, <laughs> I was uh, texted when I was on vacation and said, would you be willing to do this? And I said, well, I just shaved. I think this was Thursday or Friday of last week. So I, I assumed that it was from that day forward because we're in November <laughs> already. So I, I haven't shaved for four days. Mm. So I do have a four-day head start on my good friend, Dave Chodowski. Now, are there rules? Are you allowed to trim? Um, yeah, l listen, I will not do a neck beard, so there will be trimming. Okay. Um, you, no one okay. wants to see that, so okay. there will be some trimming, and, and I'll try to keep it as trim as possible. And can women just not shave our legs? Go ahead. <laughs> hey, go nuts. Knock no. yourself out. <laughs> I mean, I speak for myself, but go I know, ahead. you don't want that. I say, why not? All right, next, this pup found himself in quite a spot. We're going to show you how firefighters saved his life. It's our show of something good. I do. Can you hear me? Is this my mic check? All right, you got it.
We wrap it up with our show of something good comes from California. The Kern County Fire Department got an unusual call recently. This little fellow right there got himself stuck in a fence, Lena. They broke out the jaws of life and they cut him free. They saved him. They said the pup was unharmed and very happy to have his freedom back. I can imagine. That's what a dog with too much energy can get into. But thankfully, the firefighters came and saved the day. I'm Love sorry. That's all I'm doing. Is like, <laughs> Thanks for watching What's New. What Matters Most with the two of us starts right now. Innovation District. We talk a lot about jobs, and it's about jobs. But it's also about quality of life. The governor comes to Cleveland pushing a new medical development project one step closer to reality. Mark Namick explains the economic impact on the CLE.